Hi guys, today's video is in collaboration with Macintosh, who are Scotland's number one ready meal brand. You might remember me blogging about them back in September. I blogged about their macaroni cheese, which is my favourite one ever, and they reached out to me to see if we could collaborate on something to promote their Burns Night Made Easy campaign, which is all about celebrating Burns Night with their meals and as it says in Scots on the pack, just to mention this packaging is limited edition so it is subject to availability. Basically it's about having a Burns Night without any hard work in your part. You basically just heat and eat. I thought the best way I could showcase the hassle free aspect of these meals would be to host a dinner party and film a get ready with me to show you you can use these at a Burns Night without your guests feeling like they've compromised in quality but you still get to enjoy the getting ready process, be really relaxed throughout that and then get to socialise because you're not spending your entire dinner party in the kitchen. Obviously the first step in getting ready is getting in the shower and I washed my hair, I used the Davines Oil Shampoo and Conditioner. I'm currently testing out some Dermalogica bits so I used their Special Cleansing Gel which I think is drying me out a little bit so I'm not a huge fan of that but I do love their daily super exfoliant. Since it was a party and I knew my scent wouldn't get overpowered with kitchen smell thanks to these and the Macintosh meals, I went for a little bit of luxury and I used my Mon Guerlain shower gel and then I also layered that up with the Mon Guerlain body lotion just for the ultimate luxury fragrance experience. On to brushing my teeth and I used Sensodyne Pro Enamel Strong and Bright which I am loving at the moment. It just leaves my mouth feeling really really fresh but it doesn't make my teeth sensitive. I then used the Kiehl's Clarity Activating Toner before putting on a fresh pair of pyjamas to relax and enjoy the getting ready process in. I used the Sarah Chapman Skinesis 3D Moisture Infusion Sheet Mask which is the longest name ever and it looks a little terrifying but it's so so worth it. It makes my skin feel glowy and plumped up but it never verges on to feeling greasy and I feel like this sheet actually fits in my face quite well and it stays in place really well so that's always a positive. Some of them just seem like they're hanging off. I set a timer for 20 minutes just to give myself time to relax and used it to catch up on Instagram. I thought this little video that Macintosh had put up was super cute. Another thing I really like about their meals is how easy it is to have the vegetarian and meat options for all your guests, whereas if you're cooking from scratch, that's like a big job to prepare a meat haggis and a whole separate vegetarian haggis. So that's just another point that I think is totally in favour of using these kind of meals when you are catering for an event that you've got people with different dietary requirements at. Time for the mask to come off and onto my hair. I used my Davines Oi All-in-One Milk and I brushed that through with my fingers before starting to actually blow dry my hair. And for that I used my Dyson hair dryer, my big round wet brush and then a whole load of sectioning clips just to part my hair as I'm doing now. So you guys can see I section off one side, clip that up out of the way and then I kind of section off the top because that's the section that I work with quickest because that's where I want the most volume so I don't want that to dry in its own way. So I section off the other side as well and then I just put my fingers through it and I start taking sections like this. I use the Bumble and Bumble Thickening Hairspray spray that into my hair while it's wet and then wrap it around the brush and start to dry. So I always kind of start with the end first because the end is the quickest to dry so I want to get back in control of that. Then I start from the kind of middle of the hair and I run the brush down wrapping the hair around it and then the very last kind of bit that I do is going right back to the top of the head and doing from the roots because my roots stay wettest for longest basically. I then start to wrap my hair around my fingers and I roll it up and then I pin it so that it's setting into that kind of voluminous curl format and then I just work through the sections and when I go to the side I'm going out the way and when I go from the top I pull more towards the front so you guys saw that there so I hope that's helpful for those of you that are kind of always asking about my hair routine so it looks a bit bad but it's worth it in the end and it makes your hair last so much longer as well pop a hairband on and that gets my hair out of my face to go onto my makeup so I'm starting off with this freeze 24 7 instant smoothing and brightening primer which I don't know where I got this, I thought I, got, I think I got it in a goodie bag or something at a shopping event but I'm trying to work through a lot of my stuff this year, you guys know that if you've seen my beauty resolutions video and I just pulled this out but I'm actually really really enjoying it, I'm kind of annoyed that it's just like a deluxe sample size that I've got. On to corrector, if you guys watch my project plan video you'll know I'm trying to use this up and I'm using that up with an Anastasia brush. That's like quite a good brush because it's like a flat synthetic one so I can use one side with the peach corrector under my eyes to try and brighten that and then I just flip the brush over and I can use the other side of the brush with the green corrector and I use that where I get particularly red so my chin around my nostrils and then a little bit on my cheeks and then I just pat that in with the warmth of my finger. On to foundation and I'm using the L'Oreal Infallible. I actually recently repurchased this. I absolutely love the finish it gives. 
it's really really glowy but it's still really really good coverage I find it kind of can slide off my face it's better in winter than in summer I do need to use a setting spray with it if I'm going to make it last all day I didn't in this video just because I was only doing my makeup for a dinner party I do love the finish but there's some longevity issues with it if you've got oily skin for concealer, I reached for my Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer and I just applied that quite in similar areas to where I did the corrector, so under the eyes and around the nostrils and then just again tapping that in with my finger and letting it really merge and mesh into the skin. My highlighter is again another Project Pan item and it's my Becca Liquid Highlighter in the shade Moonstone which talking of merging into the skin I just feel this does that so so beautifully. I always forget to use it because it is a cream highlighter product but it's absolutely beautiful and I remember to it just looks very natural but super healthy and glowy and like it's part of your skin and you're just lit from within it doesn't look like a product. For powder I reached into my Hourglass palette and I used the shade Diffused Light and I used that on a Morphe brush and just swept that under my eyes and through the kind of centre of my face just to put things into place without being super super powdery. For my cheeks I wasn't too sure originally what to go for but I eventually went for my Benefit Cheek Parade palette and I went for my Real Techniques Multitask brush and I used that to apply some of the Hula Light from the palette which I really really like this. If you're pale like me it just gives you a little bit of life but it's not making you look orange at all. And then I went for my Real Techniques Bold Metals blush brush and I used the Dandelion blush from the palette which when that's paired with the Hula Light I think that's just such a lovely combination for anyone who is a little bit on the pale side. It just gives you that life and makes you look more awake and more healthy but it's just not over the top at all. And then for highlighter I went full benefit cheek and went on to Dandelion Twinkle with my Smashbox fan brush and I just put that on really lightly. This is a very natural highlighter. It didn't kind of work out being too much having that and the liquid on. It just looks very healthy and glowy. I didn't really realise how much benefit I was using in this video but I also used my Benefit Cabrow for my brow product and I applied that using my Louise Young angled brush. Onto my eyes and for my eyes I used the Too Faced Chocolate Bonbons palette, my Shumura Eyelash Curler, the Bam Eyeshadow Primer, a Marc Jacobs Brown Eyeliner and then the Urban Decay Subversion Mascara Primer and Perversion Mascara. First thing I did was curl my eyelashes and apply the eyeshadow primer. I then used a MAC 239 and I went into the shade Divinity and I put that all over just placing it down to set the primer. And then sticking with the MAC 239 went on to Cashew Chew which I put over the lid and slightly under the eyes. And then I switched over to a fluffy Chanel brush and that's a little bit of almond truffle that I'm using in the kind of outer third in the crease and under the eye for some soft definition. And then same brush I'm dipping in to mocha just to deepen the crease up a little bit. And then the main focus is going into the molasses chip shade and just patting that over for that really, really pretty sheen just kind of lift it. I'm taking a Morphe smudger brush into satin sheets and I'm using that on my inner corner just to bring some light into there and then that is my Marc Jacobs eyeliner. I'm just very very lightly smudging a little bit of that on and then I'm taking my Morphe smudge brush and I'm taking that into the dark truffle shade. I'm using that to actually smudge that liner out. You need to work super quickly with Marc Jacobs liners because once they're set they're very much in place. It's then just a quick coat of mascara primer and mascara and then the last thing that's left to do is the lips. For the lips I decided to use my Kat Von D Everlasting Lip Liner in the shade Rosary. These are really really lovely, they're quite creamy but again you've got a little bit of playtime but once they're set they're very much in place and I outlined my lips and then filled them in with the lip liner. And then for my lipstick I went for an old favourite which is MAC Red which is just a beautiful old Hollywood classic red. Makes your teeth look whiter, really really flattering, gorgeous colour, really easy formula. Really, I don't like reach for this enough and then I don't know why because it's so nice. That is the face done and now that that's ticked off it's time to take that hairband out and start to unpin the hair that we pinned up earlier. It always looks a little bit of a mess and a little bit mad when it first comes down but you can see straight away like how much those curls have now set in which means that you've got a good base for working with. Once they're all unpinned I just start to flip my hair and get it in the position that I kind of want it to be falling in, running my fingers through it. I don't want to brush it too early because the more you brush it the more it's going to fall so you kind of want everything to be where you want it to be before you brush it just to smooth it. Once it's kind of in the formation that you want then you can go through your brush. I use my wet brush because it's quite wide bristles, it's not going to totally ruin your hair and you can see when I'm brushing that through so it smooths it down and kind of gives it that like more uniform look. 
once I'm happy with how it's sitting, I will turn my curling tongue on and then I just start to put a little bit more definition through the ends. So nothing up the top, just enough to kind of keep those ends in and like very much through the lower kind of lower half to lower third of the hair because it is going to fall but it's really just those ends that you want to keep in because this isn't curly look as such, it is just kind of a blow dried voluminous look. On to what I wore, I went for this H&M tartan top, it's got all this beautiful like sewn on pearl embellishment, it was £24.99 I think it just looks so much more expensive than that. I absolutely love it, I've actually bought two of them so that I've got a backup. And after that I then sprayed the final layer of my scent sandwich and went for my Mon Guerlain perfume obviously as well. What I really like about this top as well is the sleeves are really long but they get these really cute zip details that keep them really really tight at the cuffs. They also don't fall into your food because they're so tight, which is obviously a plus point in your cooking. My starter was this scotch broth. I have done a separate video that's got the kind of menu that I served up in it, so I'll link that up at the end if you want the recipes. Then it was time to toast our haggis, and then go to the main event, which is obviously the Macintosh meals. Really simple, you just pierce some holes in it and then pop it in the microwave for four and a half minutes, so really couldn't be easier. One thing I really liked as well that I just wanted to highlight was the meat version comes in the black packaging and the vegetarian version comes in the white packaging which just makes it really simple if you've got a vegetarian at your dinner, which I did, because it just means you're not going to get mixed up and accidentally serve somebody the wrong meal because they will look totally the same once they're on the plate. And Lauren said the vegetarian version was very, very nice. If you are thinking about hosting a burn supper or even if you literally are just having something on your own and you want to celebrate, these are just super convenient. I really couldn't recommend them more. As I said, I blogged about their macaroni cheese way back in September, that was why they had reached out to me for this, but the meals are just honestly, they're really good quality, super simple, you don't need to be able to cook and they're still going to taste amazing, so really couldn't recommend them more highly. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video, thank you very much for doing so. Huge thank you to Macintosh for being so wonderful to work with in this project, it's been one of my favourite collaborations that I've done, and I will speak to you all in my next video.